March 14th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, John chapter 5 from the New Testament. After this there was a Jewish feast, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, a pool called Bethsaida, in Aramaic, which has five covered walkways. A great number of sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed people were lying in these walkways. Now a man was there who had been disabled for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and when he realized that the man had been disabled a long time already, he said to him, Do you want to become well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am trying to get into the water, someone else goes down there before me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man was healed, and he picked up his mat and started walking. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It is a Sabbath, and you are not permitted to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Pick up your mat and walk? But the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had slipped out, since there was a crowd in that place. After this, Jesus found him at the temple and said to him, Look, you have become well. Don't sin anymore, lest anything worse happen to you. The man went away and informed the Jewish leaders that Jesus was the one who had made him well. Now because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began persecuting him. So he told them, My father is working until now, and I too am working. For this reason, the Jewish leaders were trying even harder to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his own father, thus making himself equal with God. So Jesus answered them, I tell you the solemn truth, the son can do nothing on his own initiative, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, the son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him everything he does, and will show him greater deeds than these, so that you will be amazed. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whomever he wishes. Furthermore, the Father does not judge anyone, but has assigned all judgment to the Son, so that all people will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. The one who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. I tell you the solemn truth. The one who hears my message and believes the one who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned, but has crossed over from death to life. I tell you the solemn truth. A time is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For just as the Father has life in himself, Thus he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and he has granted the Son authority to execute judgment, because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, because a time is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice, and will come out, the ones who have done what is good to the resurrection resulting in life, and the ones who have done what is evil to the resurrection resulting in condemnation. I can do nothing on my own initiative, just as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies about me, and I know the testimony he testifies about me is true. You have sent to John, and he has testified to the truth. I do not accept human testimony, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a lamp that was burning and shining, and you wanted to rejoice greatly for a short time in his light. But I have a testimony greater than that from John. For the deeds that the Father has assigned me to complete, the deeds I am now doing, testify about me that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified about me. You people have never heard his voice, nor seen his form at any time, nor do you have his word residing in you, because you do not believe the one whom he sent. You study the scriptures thoroughly, because you think in them you possess eternal life, 
And it is these same scriptures that testify about me. But you are not willing to come to me so that you may have life. I do not accept praise from people, but I know you, that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another and don't seek the praise that comes from the only God? Do not suppose that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who accuses you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what Moses wrote, how will you believe my word? God, I was talking to one of my friends the other day about about salvation, whether someone is saved or not. And uh, my statement to him was, I can't speak about your salvation because that's between you and God. Uh, I can't speak about anybody's salvation <laughs> because only God and and possibly they know whether they've been truly saved but simply if you believe in God is not going to save you even the demons believe in God um, just because you read your Bible as stated in this chapter doesn't mean that you're going to be saved I also love how he goes on to talk about good works it is not by what we do here on earth that we are saved good people being just good and nothing else uh, we won't see them in heaven. And I think that's one of the hardest things for especially new Christians to grasp that concept. Uh, it is only by you, God, that we are saved. It is only by your grace that we are saved. Period. End of story. But what is amazing is as you give us a new heart and a new life, uh, that starts to change what our world looks like. Uh, we truly not only have a new life in you, of course, uh, but our life changes where we become less of this world and more about you. And so when, when you talk about good works in the Bible, or specifically when your son's talking about it in this chapter, um, the good works have nothing to do with our salvation. They are the fruit of a changed heart. They're the outward display of a changed heart. Uh, good works are the evidence of true faith, true salvation. Uh, I tend to look at my own life a lot and make sure that that fruit is constantly there, that I'm constantly on the right path, constantly doing what you want me to do. And then I see, I see other people, I, even some people who are pastors in this world, who are in charge of churches, your churches, who say that they believe in you, who read every Sunday from the Bible and, and say that they're saved, but their, their works here on earth don't show that. Uh, they're very self-absorbed. It's all about them, uh, the words that they speak. Um, and don't get me wrong, we all mess up every single day, but the words they speak almost seem to have venom, venom in them that they actually can talk to other people uh, in such a, a mean and condescending way. Um, so it's so interesting that, that we a lot of times get this backwards. It's by what we do here on earth that creates our salvation, whereas we have absolutely nothing to do with our salvation whatsoever. Uh, that is completely, completely by your grace that we are saved. And with a new life in you, uh, that starts to reflect outward in the life that other people see in us. And so I just, I just pray today that, that I just want to be that person that reflects who you are, God. Reflects it to other people, reflects it in situations. I want everyone who comes in contact with me to know that I'm madly in love with you without a shadow of a doubt by what I, I write on Facebook, but what I by what I buy at the grocery store, by what I I watch on TV, by everything, I want them to know that all of that comes from the new heart that you gave me. That grace that you gave me that saved me means more to me than anything in the world. I've had people try and take things away from me. 
I usually end up just giving it to them. <laughs> I've had things lost in this world. I've had things destroyed in this world. Whether they be people or relationships or physical material things. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that there is not a single thing in this world that could be taken away from me that would phase me because I would still have the most important thing ever in my life which is your grace and the salvation and eternal life that I have in you it doesn't mean I wouldn't be sad if I lost some people in my life it doesn't mean that I wouldn't miss those relationships But nothing from a material standpoint, my house could burn down tonight <laughs> and it still means that my, my faith isn't going anywhere. That you have sealed me with the Holy Spirit and I am yours. And that's pretty incredible to think about. God, thank you for your grace that you have offered to every single person. I pray today for those that haven't taken up that grace yet who haven't agreed to opening up that gift who are being held hostage by their own sin and lack of forgiveness God I just pray for them and that their hearts will turn to you that if it's me who's supposed to say something to them today or help them or pray for them then then open up my my heart and allow me to be yours and work through me if it's somebody else, give them the strength and the confidence to do what they need to do in those situations. But I do pray for the lost people. I was lost and I'm so glad you found me. I love you very much. In your son's name I pray. Amen.